expecting that day will come when the Lord himself will appear. And every day, every day, every day, with deep devotion, and then one day the Lord came to Lake Pampa. And so she was very happy. She showed him around. She served him all these forest edibles. And there's Lake Pampa in the background. And Ram, it's very simple forest stuff, but she offered it with such love. He was very, very pleased with her. There's nice, many nice paintings because it's a very special scene. In the upper right of this painting is Lord Ramachandra meeting Sugriva, because the place where Sugriva was was a mountain just above Lake Pampa. So Sugriva was seeing Ram and Lakshman at, by Lake Pampa, and he was up on this Rishimukh mountain wondering, who are those people? He was nervous. They're dressed in ascetic cloth, but they're wearing, they're, they're carrying swords and bows and arrows and weapons. Who's that? Who's that? Maybe it's a trick. It's maybe it's my brother, Vali. So he jumped to another mountain. And he said to his minister, who was Hanuman, everyone here knows Hanuman. I mean, you may not know details and details, but you know who's Hanuman. Right? Yeah. So, Hanuman, you're very intelligent. You're my minister. You know how to change your shape, too. You go to the bottom of this mountain and check them out. Are they friend or are they enemy? What's their purpose? So there's Sugriva bounding down Rishimukh Mountain. And you see on the left, he's coming before Lord Ram and Lakshman. It shows he's in his Vanara form. Here is in a little bit of a disguise of a mendicant. But he's got a big crown on, so it's not much of a disguise. <laughs> and here's the Iskan painting. There he is, the nice disguise. And when he gets before Lord Ramachandra, just by seeing it, with the first, their first meeting, their first meeting, their eternal associates, but in Leela is their first meeting, so it's a big deal. And as soon as Hanuman sees Lord Ramachandra, he understands immediately who he is because of his bhakti. And he immediately discloses who he is. I'm the servant of Sugriva, and he sent me here to see if you're friend or foe. <laughs> I told the whole story. Not a very good spy mission, because he trusted him completely, implicitly. And please tell me what has brought you here. Well, what, what the Lakshman speaks. And Lakshman said, we've come to search for Sugriva. Because um, the Gandharva Daru said that Sugriva will and Ram by making friendship they can help one another regain their lost wives or queen. So very good. Let me take you there. This is a gesture where Hanuman is saying, They're up on that mountain. See that mountain? I'll take you there. I know the way. So Hanuman made his body really big. And he carried Ram and Lak on his shoulders, leaped up the mountain, and lo and behold, there they are, right before Sugriva. That's the center picture. That's the mountain, by the way. And down below, that's Ram Hanuman meeting Ram for the first time. And on the right side, that's Ram then meeting Sugriva. And then Vanara is sitting on top of Rishimukh Mountain. There's another painting that's um, depicting... Sugriva, that's with the crown on. And there's other Vanaras that are checking the scene. And Ram and Lakshman are seating on branches of leaves for their, their sitting place. And you notice there's in the middle, there's one monkey extending a cloth. So that what is in the cloth, because Sita, Ram said, why come? And do you have any idea where is Sita? And they said, well, we don't know for sure where she is, but we, I can tell you, we can tell you, that long ago, there was this 
person soaring through the air, and as she was passing over Rishimuk Mountain, she dropped this cloth. And inside the cloth, there's ankle ornaments and other ornaments that she had wrapped in that cloth. Let me see. So Ram opens up the cloth, and he's amazed. He says to Ram, to Lakshman, in this painting, Look, this is Sita's necklace. I recognize it. See, in the other hand, this is her ankle ornaments. I recognize them. And he's feeling great sorrow just to see the ornaments of Sita, reminding him of the difficulty that she had undergone. And wanting to regain Sita's hand. And you notice on the far right side, there's a bear. That's Jambavan. We'll hear about Jambavan later. And... Down in the front, there's a fire, and apparently there was a procedure when patients take vows, they place their hand over the fire and take a vow, they take a vow for lasting friendship and specifically to assist one another in Ram helping Sugriva regain his wife and Sugriva helping Ram regain his wife, a bond of friendship. So here's the same thing again, making this oath of friendship. So then there's a lot of detail, which I'm not going to go into because of time. But Vali then starts to ask, how strong are you? Because look, Vali is really powerful. This and that, the other, the other thing. I think he's how powerful he is. Do you think you can really defeat him? Ram smiles and shows him his strength. One of the things he showed him was... Um, he shot an arrow that went into and out the other side of seven different trees, down into the bottom of the universe, and then back into his quiver. <laughs> wow, that was really good. There's some other things he did to show his power. So Vali said, oh, so Sugriva said, okay, I trust that, that you can defeat my brother. Now what's the plan? Ram made the plan. You go challenge your brother to combat. He'll come out of the palace, engage in combat, and with my trusty arrow, I'll finish him. So, Vali now had full confidence in Ram's strength and that he's a man of his word. He's made a vow of friendship. And so, together they go. Ram is hiding. This is, this, this is the, the part that, you know, wait a minute, he, what, why is he a, 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 an emblem of virtue and is hiding behind trees. What kind of combat is that for a chatra? So there you see in the center of the painting there's this big duel between the two brothers because they're brothers, Sugriva and Vali. And because Vali is very strong, there was a bit of a combat at the beginning, but it didn't last too long because he got whooped. So then he, he ran for his life. And when he ran for his life, he came before Ram and said, if you had no plan to protect me, why did you make this promise to begin with? And Ram said, well, you look so much alike, I couldn't tell who's who. I didn't want to shoot the wrong one. So I have an idea. What's that? Notice on one of them, there's a garland. So here's a, a garland of vines. You wear this around your neck and you all know who's who. And my doubt is, when you're in combat, a garland of vines? <laughs> it's going to get ripped off, and who's going to tell who's who again? But anyway, that's, that's the story. And so, Vali trusts Ram, and Ram says, go tonight, just after you got whooped. Go again and invite him to come out for combat. So Vali does it. Excuse me, Sugriva does it. And, he, he, and and Vali's wife says, "Don't, don't go. You know what's going. He just got whooped so bad. He, he's nearly dead. He's coming back again for battle. He's got an assistant. You know who that assistant is? Ram Chandra. He's invincible. Don't go. Don't go." But Vali was proud and he went anyways. And so, sure enough, 
they went for the second battle, and as they were battling, there you see there are seven trees, and there's Ram hiding behind the trees. And as he's hiding behind the trees, Vali is getting the best of Sugriva again. And just at the right moment, Ram releases his arrow and finishes Vali. And he turns, there's Vali with the arrow in his chest, he turns and looks at Ram behind the trees. And now I'm going to read this little section where Vali is accusing Ram of, of not being Mariada Purushottama, but a violator of Dharma. Ready? And Ram responds. So we'll get the answer when we're done. Ram and Lakshman slowly approach the mortally wounded monkey. Vali opened his eyes and looked up at Ram, who was smiling at him. The fallen monkey spoke with difficulty. You are famous for your truth and virtue, O Ram. How then have you committed such an abominable act? What was my crime that I should be punished in this way? I did not attack you. Indeed, I was engaged in fair combat with another, his brother. Why then have you killed me, remaining concealed at a distance? Then he accused Ram of irreligion, saying, that he only posed as a virtuous person. This heinous deed surely proved him to be otherwise. Had he lost control of his mind and senses, overcome by desire and swayed by sentiment, out of friendship for Sugriva, he abandoned righteousness. That's the accusation. Gasping for breath, Bali went on, I cannot understand why you have acted in this way, O Ram. What did you have to gain by killing me? A mere monkey living in the forest on wild fruits? The scriptures condemn the eating of monkey flesh or the using of their skins. There was no reason to slay me. I've done no harm to you at all. Surely this act will be condemned by all holy men and you will go to hell. Bali censured Ram at length, speaking passionately. After some time, he closed his eyes and fell back, exhausted. Here's another painting where he's pointing fingers at Ram. Ram waited for Vali to regain a little strength. When the monkey again opened his eyes, Ram said, so here's the response to that accusation, O oh, Vali, you clearly do not understand righteousness and religion. This entire earth belongs to the descendants of Manu, having been bequeathed to them by that great deity and speaker of religious codes. That's Manu. Because the line of kings was from the line of Manu, in which Rama had appeared. Bharata now rules this world, and we, his brothers, are his servants. It is thus our duty to roam the earth, promoting virtue and punishing the wicked, you, O oh proud monkey, are indeed wicked, so listen. Ram then explained to Bali the rules of morality. The younger brother, that's Sugriva, the younger brother should be regarded as one's own son, and his wife as one's daughter-in-law. Bali had therefore been guilty of a great sin in punishing the sinless Sugriva and cohabiting with Ruma, Sugriva's wife. The scriptures prescribe death as the punishment for one who has illicit sexual relations with his own daughter or the wife of his younger brother. There was no doubt that Ram's punishing him was just death penalty for such a transgression. Ram continued to address the pain-stricken body. You are now freed from the sinful reaction which would have sent you to hell. 
a person punished by the king is released from all sins and ascends to heaven. But if the king fails to punish a sinner, then he himself incurs the sin. O Vali, you should not grieve, for you have been fortunate to receive the proper punishment, making you eligible for the higher planets after death. Nor did I act wrongly by remaining concealed. Since you are a monkey, this was the appropriate way to kill you. Just as when hunting, the king shoots arrows at animals while hiding from you, so I shot you. Bali could not argue. He had always felt remorseful for the way he had treated Sugriva, but had denied those feelings remaining fiercely antagonistic toward his brother. Now he had finally received the result. All creatures had to accept the fruits of their own acts alone. No suffering or happiness came other than the result of one's former acts. Understanding this, Vali accepted Ram's words as true and gave up his anger and grief. With difficulty, he replied, How can a dwarf argue with a giant? O Ram, you are the best knower of religious principles. I am justly punished. Please forgive my harsh words spoken earlier out of sorrow and confusion. I have certainly strayed from the path of virtue. And almost finished. Vali feared that after his death, his brother Sugriva would be antagonistic to his son Angada. Vali's son Angada. Sugriva might be antagonistic towards him. He begged Ram to establish a friendship between the two monkeys, that's his son Angada and Sugriva. Ram assured Vali that Sugriva would rule the Vanaras with righteousness, treating Angada like a younger brother. Vali lost consciousness, his life all but ended. So that's the section. So back to the, the, the topic. Remember the, t- the, the title? Those of you that are not familiar with your mind, I'll, I'll just say it again a couple of times so you, the rest of you, you know it. Those of you from India, you know already. Mariada Purushottama. Mariada Purushottama means Purushottama, the best of persons, the topmost person, Uttama, person, the supreme person, who strictly follows all religious codes and never violates religious codes. A king, the best of all persons, the supreme person, is Maryada Purushottama. So that's the topic for this evening. Tomorrow we're going to touch on two other ones. Some people say, wait a minute, this and that. Sita Zentai. That's tomorrow. <coughs> she okay? Okay. Any discussion? Even if you're not so familiar with Ramayana, it's the, the, the storyline is not so difficult to follow. And you can imagine details and details are in the course of the actual Ramayana. Because I was just touching on the storyline. Um, lots of very wonderful expressions are presented. I mean, one, of the, the, one of the greatest ones, two of the greatest ones from what I narrated was Hanuman's first meeting with Ram. Like, wow. Because they're eternal associates and they're meeting for the first time. It's like Lord Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya meeting. Wow. They're eternal associates. They have such love for one another. And the feelings of love and separation that Ram experienced after Sita was <coughs> so called kidnapped. <coughs> and how did Lakshman feel? I, I, I didn't follow his instruction because Sita spoke harsh words. She threatened her life. I got, I got bewildered. 
I didn't follow your instruction. And now she just kidnapped me because I didn't follow your instruction. He felt really bad. Then. So, any discussion? Yes. So, there's instructions given which are not followed or followed. So, in this movement, you know. In Ramayana or Hare Krishna movement? Hare Krishna. Okay. Well, let's say we receive instruction that maybe, you know, doesn't make sense to us. How should we, how should we approach that? Yeah. Doesn't make sense to me. Can you help me understand so it can make sense to me? Mm-hmm. We're not blind followers. Mm-hmm. I mean, what did what did what did, what did uh, um, Arjuna do? He asked. He asked several times. But wait a minute! You said this, and then you said that. So I'm confused. Can you make Can you make it clear for me? Mm-hmm. That's what you do. He wasn't. He wasn't dragging his heels. He didn't. He wanted clarity. Wasn't a blind follower and a blind rejecter. Yeah, I'm going to do what I want to do. So it does make sense to me. So I'm not going to do it because it doesn't make sense to me. That wasn't it. I want to understand. What's what's the what's the, the considerations behind this instruction? Anyone else? Yes. A book. Yes, one of, one of her books. Just a little uh, um, more detail that Wali, when he was actually fighting Sugriva, he wore a necklace that was given to him as a gift. Yes. So, due to that necklace, That's correct. Yeah, he always gets, his power is double, double the power of his opponent. That's right. And that is why Sugriva could never uh, defeat him. Do you want to say it again slower? Because there, the people that are not familiar with her mind and maybe didn't catch it. I'll, I'll, I'll say it slower. Yeah. Vali had been given a gift, a pendant, that whatever the strength of the opponent, half of the strength of the opponent would go to him, plus his own strength. So whatever, whatever strength they had, half would go to him, plus his own strength. So he would always win. Pretty clever. Right? So, and, and, and Sugriva informed Ram. Now, when Ram was fighting Vali, it was from behind a tree. He didn't take half of Ram's strength. <laughs> he was fighting with Sugriva. And that Sugriva was strong and Vali was strong, but half of Sugriva's strength went to Vali. The light goes on. (laughs) But that wasn't the reason why he did what he did. The reason why he did what he did, he explained. It wasn't like, I I, I don't want half of my strength to go to to Bali. That's why I did it this way. He did it for a different reason. Anything else? Yes. Why did Ram do what? Tataka. 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 So, those of not those of you not familiar with Ramayana, who's Tataka, anyways? <laughs> Let me ask you. Why did Krishna kill Putana? She was a woman, right? Putana. Krishna, baby Krishna. Killed the first demon that baby Krishna killed was a woman. Right? Yeah. Yes. But although she, she, Putana had the body of a woman, she was a demon. So he, not, he Krishna, not only <coughs> withdrew her life because she was trying to kill him, Krishna gave her a position eternal position as an assistant in the spiritual world assisting Mother Jasoda. Wow. So it looked like 
you know, external was a, was a no-no, but it was a yes-yes. And Tataka, killing Tataka, was at the, the request of whom? Who made the request? You know the story. Who requested Ram to kill Tataka? The great sage named Vishwamitra. Vishwamitra Muni, right? Do you remember? Vishwamitra Muni. And Vishwamitra Muni was saying, don't worry. Vishwamitra Muni said, don't worry. Although she's in the body of a woman, she must be slain because the, vi the, the, the transgression that she's doing is very, very severe. She must be slain. Now, I, Vishwamitra Muni, can do it myself with my verminical power, but you are being requested by me, a Brahmana, being requested, requesting a Kshatriya to do this on my behalf. So if there's some wrong, it goes to the Brahmana, not to Ram. But it's not wrong, because Tataka was, you know, she was eating people alive. She wasn't a nice lady. <laughs> <laughs> and she was you know, destroying the sacrifices of the great sages, which was for the benef benefit and betterment of the whole world. It, it, it must be done. It, so there, there's, there's a rule, and you pay, pay attention. There's a rule, there's an exception to the rule. Tataka was an exception to the rule. The rule still is the rule. She was an exception for the reasons mentioned. But if you like, you can go back and read the, uh, read the section where Ram has this hesitation naturally. He's a cultured dharmic person. He has a hesitation. She's a woman. Vishwamitra makes the slate clean for the reasons mentioned. But you can read it yourself. It's nice. But thank you for that question. I think I'll add that to the list. <laughs> no, Maryada Purushottama never violates principles. He always abides by religious principles. So wait a minute. He killed a woman. That's a good one. Thank you. You're sharp. <laughs> you get five stars after your name for that nice question. <laughs> Anyone else? <coughs> Maharaj, um, yes. Yeah. So, wasn't it a destiny that uh, the Lord Ram has to abdicate the, the kingdom and go to the forest? Because there is another background that when the coronation was happening, the demigods were worried that if Ram gets settled, then who's going to kill Ram? So they plan to have this mantra like use her uh, her uh, powers to influence Kekai so that she can ask for these benedictions. Which Ramayana are you reading? <laughs> so this is uh, this is It's not Vamiki Ramayana. It's not there? No. Okay. There's many, many, many Ramayanas. And I'm familiar with many, but I've never heard that one. But eventually, Lord Ram had to go and kill Ravan, so it has to well, be... Well, that can happen n number of different ways, right? They don't have to be a cookie-cutter way because it's his Leela. It's his Leela. And part of his Leela is... Here's what Hanuman says. You ready? This is, this is in Canto 5, Chapter 19. Do you like reading Prabhupada's books? Oh, good. Canto 5, chapter 19. It's, that's a description of cosmology. And in the description in Canto 5, chapter 19, there's a description of Kim Purusha Varsha. It's one of the nine Varshas that are the central island of Jambudweep. It is Bumandala. Uh, 
Kim Purusha Varsha, there's eight prayers. And Hanuman has perfectly realized no guesswork of Hanuman. He understands that what why, why Ram did what Ram did was to teach the world what happens if you become too much attached to the opposite sex. You're going to suffer. doesn't mean, you know, don't care, but you become too much attached. So the too much attached was going after the deer. When it was very clear, Lakshman said, it is very clear, there's no such creature as that rainbow, color-changing, you know, there's no such thing. It's a trick. There's no such deer. But he went for it. Because Sita wanted. And that's a whole other lesson. But if you so if you do that which is against your better discretion because you're attached to somebody that wants that something is against your discretion, you will suffer. Hanuman says Ram wanted to teach the world that lesson. In addition to killing Ravana. So why it played out the way that it played out was, according to Hanuman, Ram wanted to teach the world that lesson. Doesn't mean, be, you know, don't, don't care about other people. Don't be overly attached to the point where you lose your discretion and do stupid things. And there's consequences for doing stupid things. Suffering. Canto 5, Chapter 19. There's eight prayers. There's noise back here, and there's noise of people running around, and you're asking a very subtle question, and I got about 20%. She's asking the Tulsi Das Ji has written Bhajan, and that there's a mentioning about that women is considered as one of the these ways, like one of the which? She's considered as like Tulsi Das is writing that, is that women writing. are on the level of animal and sudra. That's yeah. right? That's what you're saying? Yeah, there, there's a... Um, something, like something in, yeah. in his writing. Yeah. Well, so I don't... She's asking that, is that, you know, Sita has been considered as the reason of the whole drama and Is it a correct in the Shastras, like uh, this kind no. of... No. No. So because Tulsi Das had written also Ramayana. Yeah, she, no, sure, no. yeah. Yes, yes. He's giving his his rendering. And your question was, is it in scripture? What he what his rendering? That's your question. Yes. No. Now, are you you you're aware from of Bhagavad Gita, right? Yes. Now, Krishna speaks. There are three categories that are not in the ele the elevated position, but those not elevated persons, they're also eligible for perfection. Striyo, it means women, Vaisha and Tathashudras. Tithyanti param, param gatim. They're eligible for the, the supreme destination. So, that, but they're in a category where they're in unfortunate birth. So to say that somebody's in an unfortunate birth is different than saying they're an animal. But in the same category, Sriya, Vaisha, Tathashudras, 
same category, the unfortunate birth. So that's not me, it's Krishna. You no, know, in, in, in our modern, you're not a modern lady, you're a, you know, a, a mature Vedic lady, and you want to know what, is, what, what does Scripture say about the position of women. The position of women is not an elevated birth, but they, they're eligible for, for spiritual perfection, paramgatim. And then there's a path for, for persons to, to become paramgatim, deservers. And that's taking shelter of Krishna. You know, the 1866 Bhagavad Gita. Whatever may be one's misfortune by birth or whatever, it's taken away by taking full shelter of Krishna. It's just like Shabari. Her birth wasn't very elevated. She was a, you know, forest-dwelling, you know, tribal lady with a tribal father. But, you know, she was a virtuous person. And she was accepted by a virtuous person, by a great sage. And she, she, she went back to Godhead. But so we don't call her an animal. She was a virtuous, ascetic lady. <coughs> so birth is not the determining factor. Gender is part of birth. Birth is not the determining factor. Material assets is not the determining factor. What's, if that's not, what is? The disposition of taking shelter. Mami kam shananam. Is that right? Yes, because women has a higher consciousness. It's like a... Um, I mean, Shabri is a much higher consciousness than most people I know. Yeah, there's nothing to do with the man. It has nothing to do with the gender or the, gender. the birth. It has everything to do with consciousness. Okay? Yes, I know. Okay, now we have one other hand right next to you. Thank you, Manas, because the subject came. Um, I think about the uh, ninth canto, uh, Prabhupada, he's, he, he writes about Bhatna uh, Bhandi, uh, 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 Tulsi Das Ramayans. He's kind of uh, condemning Tulsi Das Ramayans on bodily aspect of uh, narration. Right? Okay, it's a delicate subject. Yeah, it's a delicate it's subject. It's not what she's bringing up either. Right. I was, my point was coming is that it's not, the, it, it's basically, it's a Vaishya is also, Vaishya means all business class is also low floor. In, at this time, everybody's, most of the people are Vaishya is Sudras anyway. Yes. So it's all over the world. It's nothing to do men or women. It's basically, Vaishya is also. It's Kali Yuga. It's Kali Yuga. Yeah. So if, can we understand in this way? I don't know what you're asking. You're making some statements. Now, yeah. what's, what's the question? So the question is, can, considering the Vaishyas also, because many people are business now, you know, I'm, I'm Okay, so what, get, 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 make it concise, please. Yeah. So what we take lesson, because all over the world is Vaishya Sudras are there. It's Kali Yuga. Right. So can we say that still, even though even though Vaishya is a Sudra, everybody, everyone is eligible to take to Krishna consciousness? Yeah. We can say, certainly say that. And we, we do it. Yeah. And then people respond different ways. <laughs> <laughs> some people, you know, get out of here. Stuff, stuff like that. And then some other people say, oh, this is wonderful. So, but everyone's eligible. And they, then, they, then they, they receive the gift and depending upon their consciousness, they'll, hint, they'll take the gift or they'll trash the gift. Look what you started. <laughs> yeah. So you have something. I was just wondering. I never knew about this unfortunate birth. Women matter. You said something about unfortunate birth, right? It's it's just, uh, Bhagavad Gita. Someone gets Bhagavad Gita. Get find the verse and read the verse in Bhagavad Gita. Mm -hmm. Striya Vaishya Stata Shudra Stepi Yanti Param Gitin. Then you look it up. Get the verse. Give it to him. He'll find the verse. And then we have to talk to the person while he's looking at the verse. 932. Can I have the book? Let's open it up. 932. 
What's chapter 9 of Bhagavad Gita? What's the title of chapter 9 of Bhagavad Gita? Most confidential knowledge. So Krishna is teaching pure devotional service. That's what the most confidential knowledge is. Here we go. Translation, Prabhupada's translation, 9.32. O son of Pita, Arjuna, those who take shelter of me, though they be of lower birth, dash, women, Vaishas, and Shudras, can attain the supreme destination. Uh-oh. Lower birth. That's not politically correct these days, is it? <laughs> because all, everyone's equal. That's, you know, the modern... You, you certainly don't discriminate by gender. You certainly don't discriminate by color. You don't discriminate by anything. It's, it's all... You, it's a smoothie. You put it in a, in a blender, turn it on high speed, and it's all one thing. But that's not Vedic culture. It, but it, it, Vedic culture makes recognition of some have gifts of good this and good that and good something else. Some don't. It doesn't matter if they have gifts or they don't have gifts. They're all eligible for the supreme perfection. So back to, on that touchy point, especially in our modern times. Wait a minute. Being born in a woman's body means a lower birth. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I don't want to read this book anymore. <laughs> Some persons are very intelligent. Some persons aren't very intelligent. Here, here's a nice story. Yeah, it, it's... it's it's not gender specific, but it's less qualified specific. The birth, so there's the, the story that Prabhupada would like to tell, the one Brahmin, when Sri Gangam was reading Bhagavad Gita because his spiritual master instructed him to read Bhagavad Gita, but he was a Brahmana who was illiterate. Could you mean that one so I have eye contact with her? Yeah, just leave that. There we go. Okay, thanks. thanks. So, he was reading Bhagavad Gita, but he's just mumbling the words because he, he. Because he was illiterate and he was crying. So Lord Chaitanya said, Brahman, what are you reading? He said, Don't tease me. He said, I'm illiterate. So what, if you're illiterate, then you, why are you crying? So my spiritual master, he understood. My spiritual master ordered me to read Bhagavad Gita 18 chapters every day, but I'm illiterate. He knew it. So I'm trying to follow his order. Okay, if you're literate, then why are you crying? Because as I read Bhagavad Gita, I'm thinking of Krishna, the Supreme Lord, being the chariot driver of Arjuna. And I see that picture in my mind, and I start to cry. And Lord Chaitanya said, you are the true understander of Bhagavad Gita, the true scholar of Bhagavad Gita. Not by material gift, by birth, good education, good, you know, good intellect, good this and that. It's the heart. So don't worry about the higher birth, lower birth, or being endowed with wealth, or being endowed with intelligence, or being endowed with beauty, or being endowed with anything. Or not having anything. Or having a bad anything. It doesn't matter. And that's the principle that Krishna consciousness rests on everywhere. Everywhere. Sense. And Prabhupada spoke on both sides of the fence. You know, the misfortune of a, a, a such and such of a birth. But they're, they're fully, they're, they're candidates <coughs> for perfection. That's the other part of what this verse says. Not just at the lower birth, it's they're eligible for perfection. Param Gatim. Supreme destination. Okay, I think we'll...
end on that happy note. Because <laughs> it's getting late. Thank you all for coming. And by the way, I just sit down. I brought with me some Mahaprasadam. Mm -hmm. Mahaprasadam from Kishore Kishori. She wants some burpee, okay. <laughs> so don't go away yet. 